Diaz. There is one rectangular tank. After guessing the width, depth, and height of the tank, a person checks the width, depth, and height of the tank. What is the difference between the guessed volume and the actual volume? Condition 1. The guessed height is the same as the actual height. Condition 2. The volume calculated by the guessed measurements is 20% greater than the volume calculated by the actual measurements. We will solve this DS question using the variable approach. DS. Six variables. Question. Condition 1. One equation. Condition 2. One equation. DS question with six variables. This question shows how you get the answer E based on the variable approach by setting six variables in the original condition. Now, six variables would generally require six equations to allow us to solve for the variables. We know that each condition would usually give us an equation, resulting in a total of two equations, one each from condition 1 and condition 2. However, since we need six equations to match the number of variables and equations in the original condition, the unequal number of equations and variables should logically give us an answer, E. Let's apply the three steps suggested previously. Follow the first step of the variable approach by modifying and rechecking the original condition and the question. We have to find the difference between the guessed volume and the actual volume. If after guessing the width, depth, and height of the tank, a person checks the actual width, depth, and height of the tank. Let's take the guessed dimensions to be W1, D1, and H1, and the actual dimensions to be W2, D2, and H2. We have to find the absolute value of W1, D1, H1, minus W2, D2, H2. Follow the second and third steps. From the original condition, we have six variables, W1, D1, H1, W2, D2, and H2. To match the number of variables with the number of equations, we need six more equations. Since conditions 1 and 2 will provide one equation each, it is about 80% likely that E would be the correct answer. Recall the three principles and choose E as the most likely answer. Let's take a look at both conditions together. Condition 1 tells us that H1 equals H2. Condition 2 tells us that W1, D1, H1 equals W2, D2, H2 plus 20% times W2, D2, H2, which simplifies to W1, D1, H1, which equals W2, D2, H2, plus 0.2 times W2, D2, H2, or W1, D1, H1, equals 1.2, times W2, D2, H2. Substituting H1 into H2 gives us W1, D1, H1, which equals 1.2 times W2, D2, H1. The H1 on either side cancels out, and we get W1, D1, which equals 1.2 times W2, D2. We still cannot say anything about the difference, as there are too many variables remaining. 
Therefore, we cannot get a unique value of W1, D1, H1 minus W2, D2, H2. And the conditions combined are not sufficient to answer the question by common mistake type 2, which means that the number of answers must be 1. On the actual exam, you can just pick E as the answer. Save time for another question. Both conditions 1 and 2 together are not sufficient. So, E is the correct answer.